Hey, it's Joe. This one is from uh, Ryan Dybeck. Uh, he says, it's been a while, I've got two questions. Do you have an attorney contact, either where you live or one who's familiar with laws in other states, uh, particularly Minnesota? Uh, I just need some peace of mind that I can protect my real estate license and know I'll have an attorney who's got my back if anything were to come up. I've been told over and over that our Commerce Department hates lease options with a passion, especially if you're licensed, because now they have something to go after and make an example of. However, I haven't uh, given up what you teach. The biggest thing they don't like is the fact that we're making a good amount of money up front from people who are likely never exercise their option. Uh, first, let me say, you're also making money as an agent from people who are selling their property up front before they make any money on it. So if you sell to another investor who has not made any money yet and you make a commission on that deal and you make more commission than he makes as a profit, have you done something wrong? No, of course not. It's the same situation here. What you're doing is facilitating a, a sale. You're making sure everybody understands what's going on. You're disclosing all the problems to them, which is one of the things that we have in the lease option agreement that we have everybody sign. So everybody understands what's going on in the transaction. So you're not going to have this kind of blowback uh, with the commission. Also, it's very legal for a, a real estate agent to sell a property on a lease option. It's done every day all over the country in every state, every city, uh, and uh, all over the world world, actually. So you're not going to have a problem with that. Now, if you have any questions about lease options and how to do them, then what I would do, if you're a real estate broker, is call your, your real estate board's uh, online broker. There's going to be somebody in every board that you can call up. Ours is called the Lisa Hotline, and we can call that attorney up and we can ask them questions as broker. I'm a broker as well. So you can, you can ask them a question. You say, well, is it legal if I do this? What's the best way to do this to protect everybody? Do you have any suggestions on this? You know, would you suggest that I do it a little bit differently? Is there anything that you would suggest that I do? So you can do that for free if you're a real estate agent because they'll take your questions. They want people to comply with the law and they want to be able to make sure that you have you know consistent income or consistent consistent income consistent uh, answers to to um, to legal questions now in addition to that uh, you can find any good real estate attorney uh, that understands creative financing uh, if you can find somebody a real estate attorney uh, who understands creative financing they will be able to tell you uh, whether or not what I'm suggesting is accurate now I know that it is I know that it is legal I know it's legal legal for uh, agents to do it. Uh, but you want to make sure that you do it properly, and, and I understand that. So, so give them a call and get their personal legal advice. Rather than me giving you the name of my attorney, I think you'd be better off finding somebody locally that you can use uh, that understands real estate investing where you're at. It may take you a few phone calls before you, before you find uh, an investor who understands creative financing, so don't be surprised if it takes you five or ten people to do that. Just to find a CPA that understands how to use creative real estate investing for a Roth IRA, uh, for my personal use, uh, it took me several years to find that person. And, uh, you know, so it's hard to, it's not always hard, it's not always easy to find the right person uh, for the job. But uh, if you're going to ask the question, get somebody who's qualified rather than somebody who just tells you no because they don't understand it properly, which is something that I see as common in attorneys. If they, don't, if they feel uncomfortable or they don't understand the process and they don't want to spend the time doing the research and you don't want to pay them for the research, uh, then they, they may just tell you, don't do that. And uh, that can cut off a whole side of your business. I once had an attorney tell me that I couldn't coach people, <laughs> that I couldn't do what I'm doing uh, you know, uh, at all. Uh, unless I complied with a certain type of thing, which didn't make any sense. It would have completely destroyed my business. So I went and found another attorney, and that second attorney said, well, you don't want to kill your business, so why don't you do it this way? And so we made a few modifications, and we did it that way, and we didn't have any problems at all after that. And that's been many years ago, by the way. Now, a second question here is, assuming I get everything above handled, what are the different costs of getting the auto marketer up and running, uh, including all the other services I need? I'd need my clone sites changed to disclose agency, all that stuff. Um, the cost for the auto marketer is $199 a month. It's a monthly fee. It's your infrastructure. It gives, gives you the websites you need. You need four domain names because there's a bunch of different websites that you have, and we have four different domain names that we use. Uh, those domain names will cost you $10 each 
per year. So you've got forty dollars a year for your domain names. We can do subdomains that don't cost you anything, but I suggest you have your own unique domain names. Um, but either way is okay. I don't, I don't mind. Uh, and the other cost is voice blasts and text blasts. Voice blasts and text blasts typically cost two and a half cents per message that goes out, which means that after all is said and done, outgoing, incoming messages, all your phone stuff is going to cost you between a dollar and two dollars per lead that comes in to this auto marketer. At least that's what I've seen on average. Uh, actually, I've seen it to be quite a bit less than that, but I like to set expectations properly. Um, also, uh, the idea that you need to disclose agency is absolutely true. So if you're a broker, when you set it up, uh, there's a setup, there's a button in the setup system that allows you to pick uh, agent or you know non-agent. And if you're, if you're um, an agent, you just want to pick the agent and it puts in verbiage into the website that says, I am an agent, uh, I'm not representing you in the transaction, I'm re representing myself, uh, and puts some clarity and disclosure in that process so that you don't get uh, bound up on that or have any problems with that. All right, I hope all this helps. Good luck.